going on? It's Adam here with Retro Repairs and it's time for another repair video. Um, I know it's been a while since I've repaired anything here for you, so I'm hoping I can uh, get a couple of videos going by soon. I've been just really, really busy this summer and started a home rental project, so I've really had minimal time and space to be able to do anything. So um, what I've got here is Pokemon Fire Red. Um, so I just picked this up today from the post office. Um, I put up a uh, mail day video recently, and so I showed you, showed me opening it, and my original thought was that this was actually a uh, a fake cartridge, but I was wrong. Um, I think I'm wrong anyway so far. We haven't gone into it yet, but um, I, th I had incorrectly thought that this was supposed to be a little more red and less orange, but that's turns out that's actually what it's supposed to be like. So um, without any further ado, let's uh, get diving right into this. So, um, let's check this out first, see what happens when you try and run it. So, we'll try it on the Nintendo DS Lite first. So we are recognizing that it's a game here. Previously it wasn't, which is interesting. But now I'm just getting a white screen. Let's uh, try that again. Interesting. Well, let's turn this off. When I tried this earlier, um, all that was happening was it was booting to the DS uh, menu, and then it was saying that we had an option pack installed. So an option pack is um, some sort of add-on for the DS. So it could be an add-on for something like Guitar Hero or anything that kind of plugs into the, uh, the Game Boy slot. So looking at this right here, I see a couple things, and let's zoom in to show you what we've got. So firstly, I see some corrosion along these pins, so we might be uh, might not be getting continuity to where we need it to go. So let's uh, let's get this whole board out and do some testing. So I'm going to use my multimeter and just want to test continuity from the pin here to somewhere further up on the circuit. So even just right there, I'm getting nothing. So right here, there's some clear damage that um, is breaking this connection. That one works. That works. That works. That works. So, this one right here is the clear bad one. So, um, I think we're gonna, gonna need to go ahead, scrape off some of that corrosion, try and get it nice and clean, and then uh, repair that. So, I'm just gonna get a couple things together and we'll dive right into it. Okay, so first thing I wanna do here is sand down some of this rust here because we've got some corrosion showing the uh, copper underneath. So I want to get that out of here. I'm just going to reuse some really fine sandpaper. This is, uh, this is sandpaper that you use for things like uh, touching up paint jobs on automobiles. So it's not going to take a lot out, but it's going to get the top layer of plating off here, which, I mean, it's not ideal, but we're in pretty tough shape to begin with. Okay, so after that, I'm going to go hit it with some alcohol just to clean up any type of dust that's on there. So this is 99% isopropyl alcohol, really good, give this a good clean for the whole thing. And then what I'm going to do here is actually, um, using some solder, just try and replate them a little bit and see if I can bridge this connection that was broken here. They do make a product that will actually put um, the appropriate kind of gold plating on top of these. It's quite expensive though and I'm not really interested in paying that much to repair this game. So let's put some flux on there. Let's get my soldering iron, clean off the tip. So for this, I use a nice uh, 
and a chisel tip. So it's flat, but pointed on the one side. So we'll add some solder to it, put a good amount on there, and just kind of run it down the pads here. Okay, so I think that's a good start. Let's uh, clean that up again. So you want to get the old uh, flux off there. So get it off the back as well, because as you can see, there's a lot of flux that was left on the bottom of my mat here. So we just want to clean that off so that it's not getting all sticky and gross and a pain to work with. Same thing with the mat itself. I'm just gonna come at it with some alcohol and a toothbrush and a cloth. Okay. So this is what we've got right now. So as you can see, I've kind of blobbed a bunch of solder on there. Um, I wanna test to see if this connection right here is sufficient enough to uh, get the signal where it needs to be. So grab my multimeter and try the same thing again. So starting from the top there. Still nothing. Still nothing there. So we may need to put a little bit of a wire jumper in place for this one. So yeah, I think that's what's going to have to happen. All right. So I'm just going to get a little bit of wire and uh, we will go jump into that right now. Okay. So first things first is I'm going to wick up all that extra solder because there is more than we really need. So I'm just going to get my solder wick out here some flux on that. I find flux on solder wick helps to uh, really just kind of help that wicking process. So let's uh, just kind of start from the top, clean the old solder off the iron. There we go. So you can see that comes right up into the wick. Works pretty well. You don't have to push hard, oops. You don't have to push hard, you don't have to really rub it in much, just put it on top and move it back and forth and let the wick do the trick. All right. So let's uh, brush that again. Okay, so this is gonna be the sort of tricky part. Um, so as you can see, it's pretty fine here. Um, I'm gonna put a single strand of wire that's gonna run into this hole just make sure I can get it in there. There we go. So it's going through the board. I'm going to solder it through on the other side, fold it down over here, and then put a very fine layer of solder on top of it. So that should bridge that connection quite nicely. So let's uh, get this in here, flip her over, and then solder this into the hole. I find it's easier just to start with the uh, putting it through that hole there and then I can trim the solder to whatever length I need it to be. So put a tiny bit of flux on there. Oop, 
apply heat and apply solder. Staying, and it is. Okay. So now I'm going to flip this over, holding it, try and hold it pretty tight there, and put a little bit more flux on the pin that we're working on. Oops, let's find something to kind of weigh that down. Maybe even. Strippers. There we go. So grab the iron again. Put some, clean that off. Use some fresh solder and So let's take a quick look here. So it looks like that's being held in. So I'm just going to use the solder wick again. <clears throat> Cut off the spent bits, flux it a little bit, and just try and wick up any remaining excess solder on there so that we're uh, not having too big of a blob of solder there for when you try and insert it. So. still in there nicely and it appears to be so let's use my side cutters now cut that off and just give it a good clean so All right, so what we've got here, this was the, uh, which one right here? Over here. So this was the part that we've got uh, where the repair was done. So as you can see, the solder has also kind of wicked onto that piece of wire. You can barely see the wire on there. So that's why I went with a single strand instead of a few strands. You don't need much to make a connection, but you wanna make sure that, um, that it's not gonna be too big or in the way. And, catch on to things. So we also need to trim off the bit from the back. Let's clean that as well. All right, so there we go. So that's on there, that's not moving. So let's try uh, throw her back in the shell and see if that did the trick. game pack inserted. So I just want to double check all of these for continuity again. Just in case when we were sanding we took too much off one of them. So this was the repaired one. That seems to work nicely. Okay, so that's all working well. Let's try, let's get a Q-tip and clean all of these. I 
Just making sure on the back that we don't have any bridging anywhere, but we do not. So, uh, there we go. And we're going to go into the save, see what we've got here. So, player, Lild, <clears throat> Pokedex 82, badges 8. A Psyduck, interesting. Let's see what we got in here. Not a whole heck of a lot in here. Not sure how you get eight badges with these, so, but, oh well. Looks like I'm a choke's their best. But there you have it. That's Pokemon Red, and now working again. So, I don't actually have a Pokemon Red until today, so now I have a Pokemon Red, which is handy. Um, or Fire Red, I should say. So, that's a, uh, Fortunately, not too difficult of a repair. Um, it's not very uncommon that you see th types of things like that, where you've got just a bad trace that's uh, causing a connection issue from the board to the pins. So appreciate you watching this video. I hope you found it informative and uh, maybe be able to revive a uh, game of your own. So appreciate you watching. Be sure to leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Um, like and subscribe to the channel so you get notifications whenever I do new videos. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you next time.